Hi guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about The Vampire Diaries, episode 804, titled An Eternity of Misery, which premiered Friday, November 11, 2016 on The CW. Guys, quick reminder before I begin, I'm recording this the same night that I watched the episode for the first time, so you are getting my first genuine reaction to the episode, as well as any um, theories and predictions that have come from what we've learned in this latest episode. Those are the only things I own. I don't own anything else that's featured in this video, except if it's a photo of myself. Otherwise, those photos related to the show itself could be found on Google. I just probably edited it through, through the color to make it more unified, but that's pretty much it. I am not making this video for money. This is just for fun. It's a great way for me to keep track of what my first impressions were, as well as any predictions, just in case down the line they do pan out or not. It's always fun to see if that stuff comes to be. So, with that said, let's get started with the 10 minute clock and let's begin with something new that we learned in this episode. So first off, let me just say that the title of the episode, An Eternity of Misery, was first said in the pilot episode by Damon and Stefan when it was brought up the, um, the promise that Damon uh, told Stefan. And then we hear it again in episode 120 in the flashback, just after the brothers turned into vampires when Damon made the promise for the first time in 1864. So there is that. So we just get, let's get back to the present day, kind of, and start by talking about the siren flashbacks. Guys, so much is revealed in this episode. I highly advise that you go check the episode out itself. I really liked it because of the fact we got the origin story. So I'm going to try to sum up the origin story as best I can. But pretty much it takes place in 740 BCE. I definitely have to update my timeline from Tumblr on that fact. Um, so there's that. So it pretty much starts off with two girls with psychic abilities meeting on a remote island after they were exiled separately from their own villages. To survive, these two girls used their psychic power to project their voices to nearby ships, which would crash as they got closer to the island. Pretty much starting the whole um, whole legends of sirens luring their per luring sailors and killing them um, when they got closer to the rocky shores. So anyways, the older island girl tricked the young village girl to feed on f of the flesh of those dead sailors, turning them into cannibals. While this whole time, the young village girl was thinking that all this meat was coming from the boars that the island girl was killing um, out of sight from her. So there's that. So, turn so out of all that said and done, we find out that the older island girl turns out to be Celine. That's right, the nanny. Celine the nanny while the young village girl was Sybil. Um, after finding out that her sister was pretty much turning her into cannibals, they're not really sisters, they're not blood related, but sisters in every other way but that. Anyways, after Sybil found out about that betrayal, she jumped off a cliff and on the brink of death, Celine calls out for help while Sybil prays for uh, a better afterlife. And Celine is met with Arcadius. And she makes a deal to spare Sybil's life. So pretty much Arcadius' deal was that he'll grant these two sirens, I guess you can call them, immortality, beauty, and youth, which they will retain by eating human flesh like they've been doing well on the island. In exchange for that, they have to gather evil souls for him to eat in hell, which he created during a psycho psychic blast in his final moments as a human. Um... Which is also another story that um, Celine told Sybil um, when they were on the island together. She used to tell um, her of the tale of Arcadius, a.k.a. Cade. So there is that. Uh, th that flashback story. Really, I don't do it justice, guys, though. So really just go watch it. You get the full um, impact of it as well as parallels that are drawn up. But anyways, the tidbits from this episode are the fact that, one, Stefan knows that Selene is the siren sister, yet Sybil erased it from his mind or made it impossible for him to share it with anybody. Kind of think of it as like when she did with Damon, every time he tries to tell someone, he has to say a penguin applesauce or something like that. But Stefan can't recall the discovery that Selene is the siren sister. So Sybil has deemed Stefan worthy to know the rest of the story about Arcadius and everything, when he admitted to relating to both Siren sisters, a question that she kept on t asking him repeatedly, asking which girl are you, the innocent one or the evil one. Sybil tells Stefan that to save Damon, he would have to kill Cade, aka the devil, aka Arcadius. Another tidbit. Otherwise, in Texas, Damon targets Peter Maxwell as his family holds an heirloom that Sybil wants. Turns out that Peter Maxwell is Matt. Donovan's father. 
So that's pretty surprising. That's how we got Matt to come back into the fold. And also, Matt finds out that Damon had left Tyler for dead. Thinking that there might be a chance that he's still holding on to life. Unfortunately not. Matt finds Damon's dead body in the trunk of the car that Damon met, left him in. So that's an unfortunate turn of events right there, though. But Damon did mention manage to find the heirloom that he was looking for. He doesn't know what it's for, but he just knows that that's what he was looking for. Another tidbit. Under Selene's influence, Georgie trapped Alaric in the armory vault. Um, because that Georgie, Georgie tried to steal something from Alaric's house. I think had one of the journals hoping to find more answers, and that's how Selene got her hands on her. Anyways, while in the vault, Alaric had to damage his own hearing in order for him to escape the vault, because they you can remember, you have to get rid of your hearing and your sight in order to feel your way out. He follows the tunnel and it leads him to um, Town Square and Mystic Falls. So, with that said, at the very end when Georgie is ordered to meet up with Celine later on and she has to admit that she failed to return Sybil to Celine, uh, Celine kills Georgie before beginning to feed from her flesh. Like, really dives in there. So anyways, Georgie wakes up all of a sudden kind of like an out-of-body experience and she sees Celine eating off of her body before her soul is actually pulled away in the dark abyss. Very similar to Catherine's fate and the fate of all the ghosts on the other side when it was crumbling um, or when it was deteriorating. So there's that. Now, however, not on, not shown on screen though, but apparently Bonnie is back at the boarding house trying to turn Enzo's humanity back on through starvation and through other tactics. It's very similar to the tactics used on Elena in season four when she had flipped her humanity switch off. And Caroline is helping Bonnie try to do this. So while that wasn't seen, we hear about that through Caroline's phone call with Stefan. So let's move on to the most shocking moment of the episode, the fact that Celine is the evil siren sister. The promo kind of gave it away last episode, so I, kind of, I was kind of expecting it, but it was surprising to learn that she was actually the evil siren sister, the island girl that turned Celine into a cannibal to begin with. So that was surprising right there. Let's move on though. Top three favorite moments. First one has to be the origin story itself. I love the origin stories to just find out where all this comes from. And because as you can, as you have to know that the sirens, they are older than the originals. They are older than the, Sil the Silas and Amara and Katsia story. It's like a good thousand years past that, I think, or even more than that. But I love the origin story and I love all the parallels between the Salvators and the sirens. Yes, to some point, it seems like overkill that they're putting too many parallels between them because originally you have had seven years to work with the Salvatores and learn this dynamic between them and then to suddenly learn that there is a connection between these sirens who've been here for hundreds of years and then to have them be so closely connected to the Salvatores through these parallels between the two. It's, it could seem like it's been overdone, but then it just shows how universal the dynamic could be um, between, um, between siblings. So I, so I actually did find myself liking the parallels. It was great to see, um, Stefan not instantly claiming that he's the good one. Um, like something he would have probably done in season one. Instead, he claims he is both of them. He's both the good one and the bad one. Um, so it was great to see the parallels. It was great to see how, um, you could see both Damon and Stefan in, in either position of Celine or Sybil in that situation. So um, that was great. I definitely love that. It was great hearing that backstory for it because this was a time before vampires were even possible. This is the time before the other side was created. This is the time before the travelers were really um, separated from the witches. So it was just great to get that mythology behind it. I'll move on to the next favorite moment for me, and that has to be Damon's escape. Damon ended up being tied up to a chair with metal chains on it, and it's just his whole commentary on how he's going to escape and how he managed to find his way to escape by having a shelf fall on top of him. I really liked it just from the fact that Damon was resourceful. He took in his surroundings and he used those to his advantage to get out. So that's kind of what I really liked, and it proved to do him well because he ended up finding that the heirloom he was he needed in doing that so there's that another favorite moment of mine has to be matt donovan and peter maxwell that father father-son dynamic 
that I really wasn't expecting to see. I wasn't at all expecting to be introduced to um, Matt's dad, let alone see the two of them together. Um, but apparently that's where Matt's been this whole time. He's been looking for his father, trying to bond back with him. And it was just great to see the two of them interact with each other. It's great to see or get, great to learn a little bit about what Peter knew about Mystic Falls. He kind of remembered the whole Wav's tale about the Vervain. And then to have Peter be there when Damon found, or have Peter be there when Matt find out, found Tyler's dead body is definitely needed. I would hate for Matt to discover that on his own. But it was great to see his father be there for him. So it was a sad moment. But it was great to see that dynamic together because I don't remember Matt ever having that dynamic with his mom, um, Kelly, back in season one. So there's that. Uh, let's move on to top three peeved moments. First, the fact that Tyler is dead, for sure. Second, the fact that Georgie was dead. Dor Georgie was killed and dead, so she's done for. So that's two things I don't like right there. Um, there's the timer right now going off. Third one, the fact that Stefan can't remember that Selene is the Siren's sister. I would have liked it better if he did remember and yet he was just, he just couldn't tell anybody about it, kind of like how Damon can't tell anybody about Celine's plan because otherwise he would keep saying applesauce penguin the whole time. So the fact that Stefan has no idea, once again, kind of puts us at square one. But I think I would have rather have it that Stefan had that knowledge in his head, yet he can't say anything. So kind of see how he deals with that um, that um, obstacle would have been better. Um, another thing I did not like was the fact that Damon does mention Elena like he remembers her. Yet he has these altered memories that should support the fact that he never met her. Like when Damon was updating Matt, he says, he kind of says, FYI, Elena and I aren't together anymore. Uh, we're never going to be together anymore. Like that comment right there gives me the impression that he remembers his relationship with Elena. That he remembers meeting her. He remembers that all the stuff that's happened with them um, over the course of six years or six seasons. And yet... All the reworking that Sybil had done in Damon's head in erasing um, the fact that he ever met Elena, erasing the, that folk, that pivotal point for him, erasing that should mean that he never met Elena. Therefore, he should never remember the relationship he had with Elena. So that just contradicts itself. So that's what really pissed me off because now I can't tell, okay, does he remember Elena or does he not remember Elena? And if he doesn't remember Elena, then okay, his loyalty to Sybil m makes sense because she made him his focus point. But if he does remember Elena, then why the hell is he loyal to Sybil like he is? So it's just, it contradicts itself on so many different levels. So that's why it bugs me. But moving on, what moment I remember most or look back on this episode, the origin story. For sure, the origin story. So there's that. Uh, random questions though, guys. Um, first one, does Celine have an agenda for the twins? We see her actually starting to tell the tale of Arcadius to them. So it has me wondering why in whether or not Celine purposefully sought out to be the nanny of these specific twins. So that has me worried in itself. Next question. Does Sybil want Cade, aka Arcadius, dead as well? Is she plotting her own way to get rid of him so that she can be out of the deal that Celine made on her behalf? There's that. Also, third one. Does Celine or does Sybil have a grudge against Celine? It kind of looked like that when she gave Georgie the message to deliver, saying, like, I don't need your help. I can do this on my own. But, like, yeah. I wonder if there's some sibling or rivalry in there, which would, again, parallel the Salvatores begin with. So there's that. Last question. Does Damon know that there is a second siren? Did Sybil bestow that information on him, give him the backstory that she just told Stefan, or is Damon still in the dark about all that and just going off by the orders that Sybil gives him? So there's that question right there. So let's move on to predictions very quickly. Uh, based off the promo for 805, it looks like Stefan is going to be mourning over the fact that Damon has to be quote-unquote put down. Surprising Lark and Caroline from the looks of it. Also, it looks like there's a possible funeral going on. Could be for Tyler. It's probably for Tyler. So there's that. And then it looks like Damon is determined to kill them all and have them buried right beside each other. He even has graves dug up for them in preparation for that. And we also see Damon locked in what looks like an armory cell. So based off the synopsis for the 805, it reads, When tragedy strikes too close to home as the headline, 
And it reads, spiraling down a dangerous path of self-destruction, Damon's latest actions prove he may be beyond the point of return. Unwilling to give up on his brother, Stefan is forced to make a gut-wrenching decision that threatens to change their relationship forever. Elsewhere, Bonnie gets advice from Caroline on how to break through to Enzo, while Matt attempts to decipher a, magical, a mysterious box of messages that he's received. Finally, after tragedy strikes close to home, Stefan and the others are forced to remember what matters most to them. Alaric also appears as well. So new questions off of that. Uh, if the funeral is for Tyler, then why isn't Bonnie um, attending it? Like, she could step away from dealing with Enzo for a few short moments unless she thinks Damon's going to go in and break Enzo out and have the two of them working together again. So that's one question I had. Another one is, in order, or another prediction I should say, is in order to break Damon from Sybil's hold, does that mean they have to undo every alteration that she did on his mind? Is it possible that an original's compulsion can override her mind control? I doubt it since Sybil is older, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, also, what, how, how do you think they can kill a siren? Do you think it's that same old school tuning fork that could do the job by just stabbing them? You think they have to dry them out? Do they have to starve them? Um, breaking their neck won't do, slitting their throat won't do. Um, another question is also the fact that Virginia St. John know that Selene was the second siren sister? Is that why she targeted her in the, in the premiere episode? Um, hopefully we'll find out. Um, did Enzo know that there was a second siren? Um, but, yeah. So, that's everything for today, guys. What did you guys think of the episode? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear about it, as well as your own thoughts, theories, and predictions of what you think is going to happen in the final season. Um, so there's that. Also, don't forget to follow me on my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I usually, um, reblog promos, web clips, quotes, um, GIFs, synopses, all of that. Um, also, my WordPress account is attached to that page as well. Um, so, follow me there if you want. And if you want a more detailed recap of the episode, uh, check out my live journal entry. The link for that is down below. You get a play-by-play -play recap of what happened in the episode, as well as my in-moments, thoughts, theories, and questions I had while watching the episode for the first time. Um, so go check that out if you want. Um, that's about it, guys. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you come back next week to hear what they say about my next episode. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, this is Mel. Wish you a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.